Bam, we're live. God, I hope so. <laughs> uh, are you in a bunk bed? Are you under a bunk yeah. bed? Yep. You are. And is that, wow. And is that a window behind you? No, this is the door. It's the door out of the room. To, to, to the outside world or just like to a hallway or something? To the outside world. Are you free to come and go as you please, or are you being held there by gunpoint? Oh, shit, he froze. I shouldn't ask that question. <laughs> come on, Sevy. Come on. Early and bullshit. Come on early and bullshit. Okay, here I am, Chase Bryan. Jeez Louise. Bam, I'm waiting. Beatmaster. Alyssa Schultz. Austin Hartman. I'm going to be sick starting Wednesday, so I don't have to go to work. Mm, LD performance training. Watch our latest video. If you guess the winner for event one, you'll win $150. Woohoo. I don't even understand that. Jackson, what's up? Brandon Waddle. Tom Guerin, the 13th. Parker Corbin. I know 99% of you know this, but some of you fuck nuts still don't know this. Equality is we start the race at the start, same starting line. All we care is that everyone has the same chance in the beginning. Equity is, is we only care about the outcome. So if Caleb and I were to race, if we wanted equity, we would chop off his fucking foot. And him and I would cross the finish line at the same time. If we wanted equality, him and I would be told the race is tomorrow at 10 a.m. They would shoot the gun and we would both start running. That's equality. The only place that there's equity is in prison. That's where you get equity. Get that shit fucking confused. You do not want equity. Equity is concerned about the outcome. And the outcome is based on the lowest common denominator. And the schools in San Diego, California, since certain people weren't turning in their homework and getting bad grades because of it, instead of getting tutors for those people, they made it so you can't grade a kid based on the homework he turns in. They lowered the bar to make it equitable for everyone. That's, 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 that's not that, – that, that's uh, lowest common denominator thinking. It's just idiocy. Yo, yo. What's up? What's happening? Fuck, just pumped. <laughs> just fucking pumped. Just say Cheers to you. Drink that fucking poison, Ricky. It's the only chance anyone has of beating you. Drink ah. that shit. That blue shit. Nice bit of Gatorade. I love it. <sighs> what do you got? Uh, coffee. Paper Street. Ah. The good stuff. Even Ricky sperm drink Gatorade. That's what a badass he is. That <laughs> goes straight to his testicles. <laughs> you know it. Hey, dude, when you were at, um, when, oh, do you know Caleb, Ricky, Ricky, Caleb, Caleb, Ricky? Caleb, nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you, Ricky. Uh, Caleb's in the uh, U.S. Air Force, and he's, um, this is like, he's been deployed, and he's somewhere sitting on a bunk bed. Oh, wow. <laughs> His life is the exact opposite of yours. Yours is completely selfish to show the world you're the greatest dude ever, and this man's overseas fighting for our freedoms. I, and I'm exploiting both of you. <laughs> oh, thanks for looking we'll after go with us. That. Yes, thank you for looking after us, Caleb. <laughs> Anytime. Ricky finishes top five and wins two events released already. You like the events that are released already? Yeah, I love them. You yeah. do. Um, a rumor, I heard that you were um, on a bike today doing wheelies in the registration <laughs> area. True or false? Uh, it's true. It is true? Yeah. I was um, trying to do a wheelie just to um, show everyone that I can ride a bike. And um, it, it is, are the individuals, has it been announced individuals will be riding? Yeah. 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 We're, we're doing uh, two five-mile rides broken up with some toaster bar and chest bar which you've probably seen 
I, I have, I actually, I mean, I kind of saw it, but I didn't take close look at it. So, oh, you haven't seen so it. no, so 10 miles, you're stoked. Is it, is oh, it yeah. a road riding or a dirt riding? It's a, it's a mix. So it's all terrain. It's uh, road, gravel, grass. Um, so we do, tw- we do 75 toes to bar and then we do a five mile bike and then we come back, we do 75 chest to bar and then we finish with a five mile bike. Dude, you're stoked. Oh yeah. I'm over the moon. Hey, um, you kind you had a, I don't know what you guys call it in Australia, but you had motocross aspirations as a kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. You had a dirt bike. You want some of your earliest memories is, is a four year old boy, uh, Riding yeah. your dirt bike. Riding dirt bikes, yeah. Yeah, I grew hey, up on dirt bikes. You told um you told Jared is the dude's name Jared from Jello Games? Uh Jared, yeah. Zulos Games. Yeah. yeah. Uh you told him that you were riding your dirt bike and you rode under the house and hit your neck. Yeah. That means you lived in one of those so you lived in like a white trash house, like one of those yeah, ones that yeah, like yeah. they roll in on a truck and you just lived yeah, out in yeah. the field. Yeah, that's it on stilts. Holy shit. <laughs> You're ghetto as a motherfucker. Wow. Yeah. Motorcycles at four and riding under the house. So your your house had yeah. wheels. Yeah, pretty much. Came on a truck. <laughs> Came on a big truck. <laughs> two trucks. Two big trucks. And then they, they, and then they stick the house together like yeah. this, right? It's called yeah. like a double wide? Yeah. That's yeah. It. yeah, that's my, how. Then my dad built a big veranda around the outside. So we used to just ride our bikes and scooters and skateboards around the house all day. Dude, you don't belong in Nevada. You belong. You need to go like to the Carolinas or Georgia or Texas or Louisiana. You feel right at home over there. Yeah, Texas would be cool. Oh my goodness. Um. So and, and so, was there a biking event last time you were at the games? Yeah. And you won it. Yeah, I won it. Yeah. I think I remember I was filming at the finish line. You did a little peel out, or you jumped off while it was riding, or you did something fucking. Nah, cool. I did a big, did a big skid. Yeah. Like a big skid, and then just kind of went, yeah, woo. And no one was close. Nah, no one near. Oh my goodness! Let's see, uh, let's see how this one goes. Um, you think that's a little home cooking? They did that on purpose to like welcome you back as a <laughs> gift. Welcome back, yeah. Ricky Garrard. We're gonna give you ten miles on the bike. Yeah, it's, it seems that way. I'm, I'm very um happy. I'm playing a fantasy league. I'm so bummed I didn't get you. Ah. Uh. Uh, toes to bar aren't going to do shit, right? They're not going to bug you at all on the nah, bike. Nah, that's fine. I uh, think what's... Um, I think depending how experienced you are on a bike, if you're not super experienced, I think you're very tense with your arms and you can like fatigue your shoulders and your arms a lot. But I think um, for me, I'd never have issues with, with arm pain or anything on the bike. So the toes to bar, and chest to bar should should be fine. Maybe you could maybe you could be like, hey, Vellner, this is a one-time offer just to hook you up just for that little mishap four years ago. I'm going to let you draft off my ass for the first five-mile ride. I'm going to show you how it's fucking done. <laughs> Next five miles, you're on your own. Good, buddy? You good? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be down for that. Give him a little gift, just like, hey, yeah, I owe yeah. you one. I owe, <laughs> I owe you one. <laughs> yeah. Tori and Pro. A bad idea. Uh, Tori and Pro, you show up, and you're um, – your adrenaline is fucking through the roof, like <laughs> so through the roof you can barely operate, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, why did you expect that? To walk me through when you're like, oh shit, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, nah, I was just just nerves and just anxious. Just like I felt like there's only three spots, and if you make a mistake, and like it was my finally my time to make a make a stand and try and um, prove myself in on the stage and get back to the CrossFit Games. So I, I thought if if I fuck it up here, then my story kind of ends or it gets delayed again. So it was just like the fear fear of failure, I, I suppose, was was getting to me, getting to me. Did Benny say anything to you like, "Hey, dude, failure's not an option," or did he give you any crazy talks? Uh yeah, a little bit. Yeah, like, drilling drilling into me like. That I'm to, to like believe in myself and just carry that confidence and like that I'm a beast of an athlete and just go out there and do your thing and you've put in the work and you deserve to be here and and um, yeah just go and show them what's up. And does that does that mean something to you coming from your older brother? Like you're like oh shit he I yeah like- yeah for sure he helps me helps me heaps with my 
self belief and confidence and that he believes in me that more than anyone else. He's so different than you, right? I remember him being out on the field, uh, like when he finished Murph and him and I were talking and he was just a fucking madman, even though he just finished, everyone's like hiding in the heat and just exhausted. He's just fucking still what? Tasmanian devil just going yeah. off. Yeah. He gets fired up. He gets, get the endorphins going. He can't stop him. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but you're driving. I've been driving drunk before as a kid, and then you see a cop go by the other way, and you get kind of like a little like, oh, fuck. And then the lights go on behind you, and you're fucking like seeing your life flash before your eyes. I mean, you're yeah. going to fucking – your skin's crawling. Was it like that out there? Like yeah, at Torrin? Yeah, like, oh, like, yeah, yeah like, holy fuck. Yeah, like, you couldn't even – like, you wanted to just run away. You're like, fuck it, I can't even do this. And you just wanted to run outside to the parking lot and go home? Uh, not quite. I didn't want to really hide. I just – all of a sudden, it just hit me, and my body just—I could just feel it shutting down, and my energy was just it was completely zapped. Oh, so it wasn't like you were vibrating and shaking. Nah, no. Nah. Oh, just like in the lead up to the event, I couldn't keep any food down. I, I vomited twice, and I couldn't eat any food. So I just had like no energy going into such a long event. So by the end of the event, my body was just like, man, I got nothing left. What? <laughs> you haven't fed me. And then by the last day, that shit went away. You were you were at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the last day, I felt felt good, felt b back where where I wanted to be, and confidence was was up, and just believing in myself. Um, how did you get access to the bike already today? Uh, they took us there this morning as a group. Yeah, as a big group, and they um, measured us all up with the bikes, got our helmets, and then. We did like a – Boz took us on a guided lap around the course. And then after the first lap, he said, all right, go for it. You can go as fast as you want or as slow as you want. You can do one more lap. So our group just like took off as fast as they could. And like I was just kind of cruising in the middle. And then I was like, all right, we're going to race. <laughs> so we all like took off. And I was like, oh, we may as well get a feel for what one lap's going to feel like, like at race pace. And then, um, yeah, we come back and – I think Lazar was like, I think Ricky's got a faster bike. <laughs> <laughs> and you had already experienced, you had already enjoyed your camaraderie with him in Dubai. You guys had yeah. some shit talking going on there. And yeah. so he was just continuing it here at the games. Yeah, yeah pretty much. It was, it was funny. Uh, how, long, how long is a lap? One mile. So you do, you're going to end up doing 10 laps, five and then yeah. five. Five and five, yeah. And is the crack how how wide is the uh, how wide is the track? Uh, I'd say I'd say about five meters. Okay. Which is fifteen feet. It's narrow. Fifteen feet, yeah. Some some bit wider than others. Okay, but 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 at, at, at full speed, two or three guys side by side, and that that room gets taken up quickly. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. There's there's a section that comes down the hill, and and then there's like a pretty tight corner which is all on on gravel so i think if you're there with a the group you could definitely crash or um did you see the ladies ride no nah, i didn't no nah. because it, well, the last time i was in madison and i saw the ladies warming up it was um yeah i would say a third of the field was pathetic like dang like dangerous <laughs> like oh shit maybe you that person's never been on a bike before yeah yeah, I, I think the cyclocross event in 2017 was definitely more dangerous than, than this track. But downhill into a gravel turn is hairball. Yeah, yeah, it could be. <laughs> it could be, yeah. <laughs> Especially if there's like a group of five or ten of you, there's not really much, a lot of room. Like, you're going to have to take, take charge and like someone, someone will back off, someone will go for it, like whoever has the confidence to... Put in, push, push themselves into the corner. Who's the second best rider? In the miles? Yeah. Oh, I, I got no idea, to be honest. I think Jay Crouch goes pretty well on a, on a bike. That's my boy. So you, I'm playing a fantasy league. You think I should put Jay in? For that event? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. Okay. Jay Crouch it is. And maybe, since he's Australian, if someone gets close to him, you would like you guys would squeeze them out together. Like if Velner tries to come up between the middle, you, you oh, and Jay yeah. squeeze them out. Yeah, just fuck them up. Yeah, yeah. Just don't fuck with Colton. He's on my team too. <laughs> uh, Colton, no. 
did they have a bike small enough for Colton? I didn't actually notice or think of it. But I hope it. It's a good point, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, it's, it's valid. I'm seeing him complaining about anything, so hopefully he's all right. How, how many gears, uh, how many speeds are, is the bike, are the bikes? 10, 10 speed. 10 speed. One gear at the front, 10 at the back. Um, I heard that on the teams that Lauren Fisher is injured mm. and that the Icelandic team is trying to get Katrin in her place. Yeah, I, I heard the same, yeah. You did hear the same? Yeah. So that's a, that's a pretty good rumor that's swirling around. <laughs> soon find out i thought maybe we would already know yeah wow that would spice things up a little bit did you see that icelandic team i bumped into lauren and any at the gym at crossfit connects uh yesterday did you see anything weird about lauren like like there was a doctor hanging off her side or she had ice on her shoulder or any signs to prove uh, it's true no nah, she was just she was just doing a workout she did a bit of bike and ski and just warming up because I, I was there and I pretty much was finished so I didn't quite get to see what she did after because I left oh god please no yep I'm sorry Ricky is taken Kenneth and he's straight I'm sorry but maybe in another maybe in another lifetime he just found out um uh when you um about I don't know about a year ago when it became obvious that you were still in the game. Go ahead. Do you need to give, kiss your girlfriend or something or slap her on the ass or something? Yeah, she's, she's telling me to do something. I need some headphones. Uh, she needs headphones. Um, I want to walk in the camera. Um, w w about a year ago, I think it was, when you started um, popping back up on the scene, it was obvious you were, you were still in the game after your hiatus. Um, yeah. Dave Castro welcomed you back, sort of, you know, right? He, yeah. he he made it clear that you were welcome and that he um, supported your comeback. Is that correct? With some posts and stuff. I don't remember exactly what it was. Is that accurate? Sorry, you got me? Uh, yeah. Is that accurate? Like when you, about a year ago, Dave made it known that, Hey, just so you know, I can't remember. He made some a, a post maybe once a week or yeah. once every other week or once a month. He made a handful of posts saying, Hey, Ricky's yeah. back in the game. I approve. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of times. Yeah. yeah. Um. Did that? Did Did he coordinate th with that with you, or do you just turn on your phone and you're like, "Oh shit, this yeah. motherfucker's being cool." Yeah, yeah pretty much. I I didn't coordinate it with him. He just said yeah, went about it himself, and yeah, I thought it was awesome and uh, yeah, res respect Dave a lot. So it meant a lot that he was doing that uh, for me. Any any signs of him there? Have you seen him? Has anyone told you whether he's going to be starting the games? Is he participating in any way? No, no, no sign at all. No one spoke about it or mentioned anything. Okay, and uh, anyone talking crap to Ricky since coming back? They not to his face. <laughs> yeah, not to my face. Um, and, 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 and at Torian, it was awesome, right? Everyone was cool as shit. Yeah, yeah, Torian was amazing. The crowd was unreal. And afterwards, in the back, uh, you got love, tons of love from the posse. Uh, yeah. Miss Cara Saunders, Miss Tia Toomey, yeah. Royce Dunn. The crew was just like, you demand, Ricky. Yeah, they were just um, respectful for what I've been through and just um, it, like surprised that I was able to push through and be patient and resilient to overcome what I had to wait for. And yeah, that was amazed that I, I was back because they they said if some of them said if that was them in that position they would have quit and got a day job and just lived got lived. a job at the kangaroo park at the koala yeah. petting zoo yeah <laughs> live that life it's fucking nuts I, I i can't i hey um you've been out so when you've been out so long do you remember i think it was chuck carswell said this to me i don't remember what year maybe it was 2011 or 12 it was in a behind the scenes and he said to me the training you do at the games, you cannot replicate anywhere in the fucking world. No, how, no way. And so those people then each year that they come to the games have an advantage. I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, meaning they go to a place in the pain cave and in the PR cave and in the personal best cave that, that like that can't be replicated. It's just it's, it's a, the games is a special training camp. 
Yeah. Um, do you agree with that? And do you remember that? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I th- the programming of the CrossFit Games kind of brings out your natural athletic ability that you've developed from such a young age. Uh, I think um, for me personally, that's why I love the games. There's always stuff that's outside the box that um, takes me back to my childhood and uh, my athletic background, like things like a bike ride and, and running and obstacle courses and jumping over hay bales and all that. But how, but how about the, the, like you said, a PR at the last games, right? With your, with your uh, clean and jerk, right? Yeah, I'm a snatch. Oh, a snatch, right. Yeah. Two, t- 275? 287. 287, my bad. I'm fucking this all up. And and, and that's that's a, um, I mean, it's a product of your hard work, but it's a product of the environment also, right? Like that shit's not going to happen like in your backyard. No, nah, no, nah, for sure. It's still stuff you have to practice and do just to keep your skills up and expose yourself to it. So you since you haven't been to the last four games it's not like hey you rested and you're better off than the other guys you have missed something yeah for sure the the competition experience and vibe is is nothing you can replicate um it's like yeah even if you try and try and do it like I, i would try and replicate it as best i could and and put the guys on the tv in the gym and Three, two, one, go. Try and start the clock at the same time and and burst them on the TV at the gym. But like it helped a bit, but it was like it's not going to be the same, you know. Oh, that's cool that you did that. I didn't even know you did that. Is that common with athletes to do that? I don't know. I used to I did heaps for like the four years I was off. Like even like the rogue invitational. Yeah. Games workouts. I just burst them on the on the screen. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah. then we, if, if like, if, if you were to do a workout that Matt was doing on the screen and, and then you beat him, would you text him? Fuck, I fucked you up. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> right back there. Uh, have you texted him over the years and he doesn't text you back? No, nah, no, nah, I'm joking. Oh, oh. I'll give you his number if you want to harass him. I'll give you his number <laughs> if you want to harass him. Yeah, send it over. No. You, you said to Jared that your fr- it was your rookie year at the games and that um, Matt knew that your legs were sore and he came over and squeezed them. He yeah. saw that your hands were torn and he was like, oh, you poor little baby. <laughs> and you told the story about how um, he, he did your max snatch and caught it in the bottom and then said, hey, Ricky, isn't this your max? And stood uh, up with it. That's it. That's yeah, it. That, what a good dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's good. It's a player. <laughs> competitive dude you gotta do what you gotta do um how how much do you weigh ricky uh right now about 92 kilos 92 kilos and how and how tall are you 202 pounds i think 203 pounds Uh, i am 179 centimeters which is five foot ten i think and, and when you were at the games last time, thank you. Yep, 202. You're such a good dude for doing the conversion for us knuckleheads over here. Um, for um, being here, because otherwise everyone's like, what is that? What, um, what was your weight? So you were at the games in 2017. Yeah. What was your weight in 2017? Uh, 87 kilos. So, uh, one... 190 is it 190 something so basically you put on two pounds of muscle a, a year about yeah it, let's say that yeah and are you are you is this ricky right here that i'm staring at fitter than that ricky yeah for sure yeah a- everywhere you didn't have to trade you didn't trade anything you're not stronger but slower or faster and weaker no nah, I'd, I'd say i'm better all around strength fitness Everything. How's your how's your swimming? Yeah, that's improved heaps as well. I, I wasn't the greatest swimmer back at um, seventeen, but since since then I went to the pool or the ocean twice a week. For, no shit. For the last four years, uh, five years. So. Uh, that's like four hundred and twenty uh, sessions. Yeah, pretty pretty much. 
Um, do you do it? Do you smoke anything, Ricky? Do you smoke cigarettes, weed? The uh, um, just cigarettes. Just cigarettes. Yeah. Pack yeah. a day. Uh, half a pack. Half a pack, right, right. And what's your favorite brand? <laughs> Winnie Blue. Um, you don't do anything fucked up. You don't even drink, do no you? Uh, I, I will drink, like, after the games. And I drank after Torian. Uh, after Dubai, I drank. Just, but you're not a bottle of wine a night guy or anything like that? Uh, just celebration drinker. Yeah. Like beer or liquor? Nah, like um, bourbon. Fosters. Bourbon. Jack Daniels or like Canadian Club. Uh, whatever is what whatever his girlfriend gives him. A man <laughs> of culture, I see. Yeah. yeah. Um have you ever heard the phrase have you ever heard this phrase? I'm so unlucky that if it were raining titties, I'd catch a dick. <laughs> 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 so, so good isn't it i meant to oh, start the show with that i'm so unlucky that if it were raining titties i'd catch a dick it's oh, good right that's so good I, it's instagram stuff i saw it on instagram this morning and like usually shit like that doesn't stick with me but i'm like man i wish i would have made that up <laughs> uh, your luck guys or, or you, i'm sorry is that how your luck goes or you got pretty good no i got great luck i got great luck <laughs> I got great luck. I'd watch. Yeah, yeah I got great luck. I got great. Look, I got you on here. Yeah, that's been pretty lucky to have me. Dur during games week. <laughs> um, Ricky, who's your agent? Snorri. Oh, it is Snorri. That's right. Oh yeah. Did um he say anything to you about um doing media? Does he like give you any like, hey, don't do this, don't do that. Yes, do this. Careful of that. Don't talk to that person. No, nah, he's alright. He's he's cool. He gives yeah. you space. Yeah, give me space. Yeah, do do whatever I want to do. Is he at the event? Yeah, he's there. Yeah, yeah, he's staying at the same hotel. And he got you the deal with that company, the tire company that you're wearing the shirt for. Yeah, they reached out to me before Snorri, which was awesome, and um, we chatted a little bit. But then Snorri kind of come on board when I was in Miami at Waterpalooza, so he kind of helped get the deal over the line oh that's right okay i i, I remember um we either i talked to you about that story or i talked to snorri about it yeah. what is this company they sell everything yeah they're they're taking over so they sell uh oh they sell, yeah all apparel shoes hats shirts sunnies shorts pretty much everything that noble does Rich Froning um, was on the show a couple of days ago, and he mentioned that the Noble shoes were absolutely fucking horrible and unwearable. <laughs> Is there any truth to that? I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't tried them. Oh, good answer. Good yeah. answer. And you don't have to wear them, right? No, we don't have to wear them for the games. All right. I you, get to wear, you get to wear your own shoes. Sorry, say that again. Yeah, I can wear my Tia shoes. Which is good. It's weird. You're cutting in and out. Oh. It's not your... I don't think it's your fault. Hold up. You hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Those are nice. Yeah, they're awesome shoes. It's. I'm so impressed how well their first shoe went. Like, I've, I've had Reeboks, Nikes for years, and yeah, these have been awesome. I love them. Are, are they wide? Yeah. I yeah. can't do that Metcon. It's like for fucking stick feet. It's like yeah. for like if you only have three toes. <laughs> yeah, these are a lot wider, which is good. It's I got a wide foot, so it helps me. I feel that about the rad shoes too. I'm concerned that their first shoe is not gonna be very good. Oh, like it's not gonna be wide enough or it's gonna be like made of cardboard like the noble shoes. Made of cardboard. Oh. <laughs> um is Velner a t did I see Velner in that in that commercial? Is he one of their athletes too? Yeah, Velner's with them. Oh, shit, I thought... But isn't he a Reebok dude? Nah, he left Reebok. Fucking genius. Have you ever... Do you ever go to any... Have you been to any of their events where the two of you are there together? Uh, nah, not yet. Oh, is that Travis Mayer? Yeah, Mayer's yeah, with I them. Think... Travis. 
there's there's heaps of us. If pretty much if you're not with Noble, you're with Tier. Yeah, I need to get with Tier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? I, I did 20 rope climbs in seven minutes and 10 seconds. I mean, more or less. More. I mean, there's the judge says I only did 19. Fuck that dude. I'll, I'll take a couple. I'll talk to them. I'll, I'll see if they send you a pair of shoes. I, I need a contract, Ricky, a fucking pair of shoes. Look at me. <laughs> fucking pair of shoes. I need a contract. Uh, David Attaway, I'm going to need a wheelie across the finish line. Oh. That'd be awesome. All right. Do that for you. I'd get some dot. I'd get get them on dot com for sure. <laughs> I'll probably flip it and crack my head open or something. <laughs> um, mom, mom and dad, will they be watching the the event? Yeah, yeah, they got here last night. So, oh shit, they're here in Madison to support, which is awesome. Wow, stoked to have them here. Um, that shit's not cheap. They did they have to like sell? Did they have to like sell the home to to? <laughs> Pretty much. Sell a few pigs or what? Yeah. Holy cow! Are you are you glad they're there? Or is a is a party like? Oh man, it's this is it. Like, daddy's yeah. in the crowd. Uh, I love it. I love you, it. You do. Yeah. Were they at Torian too? Yeah, they're at Torian as well. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. They're, they're pretty much been by my side the whole my whole life with sport and everything so they love it um ricky how do they how do they process what you've been through the last four years like just do they even do they act like it's a big deal at all do they understand maybe the stress that you went through how, how do they process it yeah they, how, they un understand it like it was hard for everyone at first just to kind of process what what was happening and what what we're going to go through and um and my dad said pretty much just we'll you got to cop it on the chin, son, and um, if you want to be back there, you know what you got to do, and um, I'll always be here to support you no matter no matter what, and it's your decision in the end, and I, I feel like you know what you want, so go and get it. I don't remember if it was Danielle or, or uh, I think it was Danielle Brandon said this, that when she... And I'm paraphrasing, so if I get this wrong, I'm sorry. But um, that as you working out and as you enter the pain cave, and, and whatever that involves, the distress, uh, muscular fatigue, uh, uh, heavy breathing, um, the yeah. volume goes up in the chatter, and and you start telling yourself maybe some stories. This is hard. Why am I doing this? I might want to quit. Um, this is hard, and, and there becomes like this. Maybe I should take a break here, and. She said that that's she was she would listen to that voice for like a year. Yeah. And that this year she's done something different where instead of like listening to the voice, she's leaning into the pain, meaning she's going switching her awareness more into her body and just taking the suffering. And when you said that your dad told you, hey, just take it on the chin. It's different than working out, but it's a big moment of life. Is there. Is there a point where it's like, hey, I, I'm not going to be able to run away from this. I'm going to just lean into this. Like, fuck it. Yeah. Just, just owning this shit. Just going to yeah. lean into it. Yeah, very similar scenario. Like, I'm not the type of person to just curl up in a ball and, and run away and hide from who I am. And I wasn't going to let my identity identity be, be that. So I um, wanted to... Yeah, have the opportunity to accept the mistake I've made and move on and just kind of rewrite my own identi identity and um, yeah, not not be a yeah. Not be I was thinking even like lean into it more like the other. I was thinking like um, open your own uh, uh, testosterone replacement clinic. <laughs> like just be like, fuck you, I'm going the other way. I'm lean, yeah. like I'm. I'm just leaning into it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Take so, five million dollars and have your own supplement. Could have, could have. Business wise, money wise, it could have been smarter, but that's. Yeah, just lean into it. Be like, all right. Like, you, I mean, you, you see, uh, who's the guy? The guy from England yeah. who got who got popped it uh, in the Olympics, and he's got the biggest weightlifting seminars in the world now. Oh he, yeah, Sunny Webster. Yeah, and he's. Have you met him? Yeah. Yeah. He seems cool as shit. 
he's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's a funny guy. Yeah, strong as shit, and he's he's awesome. Um, how, of all your attributes, what are you most proud of in your growth from uh, physical attributes uh, from seventeen to now? Your engine, your strength, your gymnastics. Is there is there a place where you're like, um, probably, all of them? Yeah, probably definitely my my strength and uh, like strength endurance. I think this has improved a lot from 2017. I feel like my engine and cardio is pretty similar, uh, but my strength's gone through the roof, and just my like ability to withstand like longer workouts and like more reps with the barbell and stuff has improved. Uh, um, and and go ahead. Just like the high end reps with the barbell has yeah, improved this guy uh roman uh krenikov um you competed yeah. against him in uh do Dub- wow wow crazy <laughs> that was that was my my old one rep max overhead squat for three reps wow uh, when is that? That's five weeks ago. Wow. Yeah. Is that your gym? Yeah, that's my brother's gym. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's not. It's not massive, but it's a nice, neat little gym. Um, what were your thoughts on uh, on Roman at the um uh, from Dubai? The, the the talk always is that he has a massive engine. Um, you beat him in the run. Uh, skier was that it? Yeah, ground, yeah. And he's supposed to be amazing at the machines. Yeah. Yeah, oh. he, he's incredible at, at the machines, as far as I've witnessed. But, yeah, he, he was impressive at Dubai. He was um, – I was just impressed how big he is and how much he weighs and how well he still performs on gymnastics and and cardio stuff, which is, I thought was impressive. 18 pounds i mean you're 202 i think he's 220 right yeah i think so yeah maybe have, have, maybe even more have you seen him yeah yeah i've seen him and does he look big uh he looks a, a lot leaner than he did in dubai yeah but you know, i said good day to him we got a got a photo you did yeah is it up on your instagram nah snorri put it up on his on his uh instagram Oh, I want to see it. I want to see. I want to see the That's size on his story. Okay. Yeah. He put up like a story and said, um, two guys that have waited five years to be here, um, but both very different situations." <laughs> have you looked? Have you thought at all about next year yet? Um, not not a lot. No. Nah. Have you? Have you thought about how many years you'll do this? Any chance this could be your last year? No, nah, definitely not. I um, I'd love to kind of pay back what I've missed. So I'll do another four or five years as long as my body holds up. You're 28. Yeah. So if you you'd like to get it at it till you're 32. Yeah, maybe 32, 33. Yeah, if I'm feeling good, I'll keep going. I wonder how old he is. I don't think he's as old as you. Is, right. Are you cu- yeah. are you in your prime? Yeah, I, I feel like it. I feel like twenty eight is a good good age. Yeah, it's it's so hard to tell. I remember when I was twenty eight, like just my whole twenties to like thirty four felt the same. Oh uh, yeah. And then like at thirty four, just something just changed. I got got better. No. No. When, when no. You, when was? <laughs> no, it really it just come down it just comes down to warming up. Yeah. It just, it just reaches a point where like hey, you you just can't move unless you warm up. Yeah, yeah. Like you just hit an age, at least for, at least for me. Like if if right. like, I can, Pardon? I can definitely notice that from from now compared to 4 or 5 years ago. It's like you have to be more diligent and disciplined with your warm-ups and cool downs and recovery and stuff. And maybe it was always like that. Maybe you always needed to be sweating to be at your peak performance, and I just didn't realize it because when you're young, 
you just dive in full steam ahead cold. Yeah. Yeah, just you don't you don't accept the consequences that could happen. You just don't even think about it, you just send it. How many workouts have they announced? Uh three. And any idea of how many there will be in its totality? Um, maybe 12 by the look of it. Okay. I feel like there'll be more. There's 11 time slots, and so far the three workouts they've given you are each in their own time slot, so none of them count as two. Well, they, they run with the jerks. Max jerks is two scored events. So oh. It's like one event, but there's technically two on the leaderboard. Okay, and so that's how you get 12 already. Yeah. The yeah. 11 times less of sun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ricky, did you see my rope climb video? He doesn't have time for that shit. Sorry, I did. No, you <laughs> don't. I'm, I'm, how dare you make me ask him that, the great Ricky Garrard. <laughs> I apologize. What did, what did you do? Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You guys look the same size. Is O2 a sponsor of yours? Nah, nah. They just gave us a free case at uh, check-in. Oh. I can't drink that stuff. Nah, why's that? It's not carbonated. Uh, what's wrong with that? I don't know. That's a great question. I don't know. I mean, Gatorade's not carbonated either. Yeah. Uh, maybe his head is a little bigger than yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a big head too, though. You say you both have pretty big heads. It's <laughs> about the same. <laughs> Let's How go. kind of Snorri to write that? Two very different reasons, you son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, well, um, I'm pumped to see how you're going to do. Uh, thanks. I know, oh, this guy is saying he's 20 pounds bigger. I don't, but I don't know if he's 20 pounds bigger. He looked pretty lean. Not sure. Maybe. Ricky has flat mm. ears. Roman is flying. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, did you see him on the bike? Do they have bikes in Russia? No, I didn't see him on the bike. Um, I was wondering that. I, I know he can ride a C2 bike. That's for sure. He, that thing. So, soon find out. Uh, Roman was 26 in January. Don't know if he turned 27 now. Uh, yeah, I thought he was about that age. Uh, okay. Well, I will be, um, bugging you throughout the week. Um, if you get a chance, come on. If not, don't come on. It's not a big deal either way. Well, it is a big deal, but it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, I, if I'm feeling it and I get time, I'll, I'll come on. All right. Bitch him. You the man, dude. Tell Snorri yeah. I said, what's up? Uh, we'll be rooting yeah. for you and it's great to see you back in the game. Awesome. Thanks That's so much. Later, Later, dude. Peace. Good luck, Ricky. At least he didn't freeze at all. Can you tell I'm just like sweats just pouring down my face? No, not at all. You don't look nervous at all. Oh, no, not nervous. I just worked out. I'm just like oh. wet. Just soaking. Oh. My hair won't even dry. I showered even. You know when you work out and shower? Oh, yeah. You know what it's like to be in a hot, in a hot place and always yeah. sweating? All the time. Nothing How can dry. <laughs> How come I don't hear your air conditioner just humming? Um, it it's it's a quiet one. It's actually it's pretty quiet, but it's it's going twenty four seven. It is. Oh shit! Did I send? Did I send Jay Crouch? Yeah, I don't hear it at all. Did I? Uh, I'm getting news. It doesn't look like Katrin would would be eligible for a team in Iceland. Okay. Um, uh, Taylor Perfect. Self sent me a text trying to get me to buy him a new computer. He can fuck off. Um, mm -hmm. Someone sent me a text saying, "Listening to Brian eat on air is disgusting, but you're amazing." I, I didn't. I didn't think it was so bad. He's a busy so guy. Bad. Yeah, I didn't think it was so bad. Give him a minute. Oh, how cute. Jay and Rob. A lot. What's up? <clears throat> How's it going? Together again. Good. I'm moist. Are you guys moist? 
moist. Very moist. Oh, I really like that in the background. That is something yummy. Is that a mannequin? <laughs> is that just a shirtless nah. mannequin back there? No, nah, that's my security guard. Damn. Oh, is that your brother? I heard your brother's there with you. <laughs> no, is that him? Not. God, the security guard. To, to protect uh to protect you from me or to protect who's <laughs> yeah. you, who okay. So if I do a get squirrely, he'll just come over here and just fucking just punch me out. Yeah, pretty much. God, I understood I'll be on my best behavior. We've, we've got another one of those out the front of your house. <laughs> a, oh shit, you do. <laughs> Holy shit. It's a topless girl. That's killer. You sent me the girl and you kept the dude. <laughs> oh, you guys are the best. You guys are the best. Uh, 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 oh, my God. He's going to be there the whole time. God, I hope so. He has to be. He's good, he's good I, at his job. Do you, do you have a mark? Will you, if you have a marker, will you just go over and draw on him? I want to see, like, see, like the, the definition on his right peck. Just go draw a black line around his titty right there, like this, and the, want to see. <laughs> I saw all the um, textures and crayons, so Jay wouldn't write on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your hotel room? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we just had Ricky on, and uh, Ricky said that you might be the second best bike rider at the event is that true potentially we'll see first best For, oh, okay okay <laughs> that's, what, first that's best. what i was considering <laughs> okay so it is but it is you and ricky there was no one else you didn't did you see anyone else who uh, looked like in like a little practice that we had ricky and i were probably the ones that were sending it okay and not because you guys are um australian show-off braggadocio types but because you guys are just better yeah uh, Maybe a bit of both. <laughs> I I'd throw Travis Mayer in the mix too because he used to race motocross. Okay. That I, That's uh, going to play a part, I reckon. The willingness to get a little bit of aggressive and choose some nice lines. Yeah, that workout's going to be fun. Um, but I have you in the in my – we we're doing a fantasy um, a league, and I have you, Spencer, Saxon, and Colton. That I should stick you in that one, right? You're definitely gonna be. You, oh, yeah. you, you're gonna beat Colton in that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Promise, you promise. Yeah, I got okay. you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you're there. Are you fucking pumped? Yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting. And after that, like I heard that workout, that it got me real pumped up. Um, Rob, what's the highest you ever placed at the games? Uh, twelfth. Um, Jay, do you, are you gonna do that this year? Are you gonna just like. Like Rob, sorry. Like this is, yeah, t it's going I mean, eleven, it's eleven great. or higher. That's a good number to chase. That's for sure. I'd a fucking I'd be great happy number. If you did that? Yeah, I would be too. <laughs> <laughs> he, hey. uh, he got seventh in the open worldwide. My best was sixth worldwide, so he was one spot off that. <laughs> um, what does the field look like to you, Rob? Now, but uh, when you were there, are these better dudes? Yeah, I think it goes deeper through the field okay. where um, there was a bit of a gap from, say, five or even seven down um, from what I remember. So, yeah, I agree with all the hype and what everyone's saying that the field is a lot deeper and um, it's it's a lot harder to tell who's going to place where. Like, you literally don't know. Like, I, he's definitely fitter and a lot better in a lot of areas, but how that st um, stacks up on the leaderboard, I have no idea. Um, but but he he won the Torian and it was a it, and it was a stiff competition. Yeah, and that, there the that's what I look at too. Are the guys that he beat, he put a bigger gap on them in points than last year, and there was less points available for that competition. So that says that he's to me in that competition separated himself from who he was competing against last year. So. But again, I don't know. <laughs> we'll right, see. Jay, are you the the guy who stepped onto the court at Torian? Do you already feel more mature than that guy? Um, no, nah, I sort of I feel in the same place. Like I feel like going into that season, uh, I mean, going into that comp, I was I was pretty confident and uh, and mature. I guess um, I just feel a lot more like calm being here and like sort of the novelty of 
the game sort of has worn off where like you know you it, where you'd be like excited to you know get the gear all that sort of stuff i sort of felt like you know i've done this before and uh i mean it's still exciting don't get me wrong but like yeah i just feel like instead of sort of this being the end goal the end goal now is to do as best as i can here um and yeah that's where we're at i i Yesterday in the show, I was thinking about the way Saxon walks onto the field now versus my memories of him first walking onto the field. Now, when he walks onto the field, it looks like he's just walking into his home gym. Yeah. Like, and, and you and you see that in the older guys. Like, you see that in Rich. Like, it just looks like he's home. There's no uncertainty or it, it, do you feel? And, and that's what you're saying. You're starting to experience that. Like, here, yeah. give me my shit. Here, I'm got my hotel room. Like, yeah. let's fucking rock. For sure, for sure. I feel like I'm definitely on my way there. Definitely. I, I'm, I'm so, I'm so pumped for you. How old are you? Twenty three. Yeah. Um. I, I think you could be a games champ. I think you <laughs> can fuck with Medeiros. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, Rob. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I agree. He's got all the. There's no reason why I can't get to that level. So yeah, I completely agree. He there's something like pristine about him already. Like he's not like like this, that thing Madaris has. Like just like young and like no matter how hard he goes, he still looks brand new. Yeah, I completely agree. He's got all the physical uh, attributes, and um, I still think there'll be some lessons along the way that needs to be learnt, and you know, get that little bit more of a fire in the belly in the off season, and things will go to another level, which I think happen for this season compared to last season as well. Uh, wh how do you interpret what he just said, Jay, when he says fire in the belly? Like, is that, I, I, if I just run with it all the way in one direction, oh, there's to it's Toby. That's Toby <laughs> back there. Toby, motherfucking Toby. Um, uh, is, is Rob saying that, that you don't, I'm, I, am I hearing that Rob's saying you don't want to win bad enough in the off season? You're just out just, fucking doing drugs and fucking <laughs> off and wakeboarding and shit? <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, but I suppose it's just more, I suppose, thinking about that all year. But, I mean, I probably could have less beers on the off-season, but, um, yeah, I think just having having that goal in mind all year and on the off-season, and then I suppose, uh, yeah, it, it gets attacked a whole different way. And in his defence, the last two years – we have been in the most locked down city in the world. So that's demotivating as well, being stuck at home. And even when he got back from the games last year, we we're in lockdown. In the lead up to the games, we we're in lockdown. So all of that stuff would have played a part too. I'm going to say something that's going to sound kind of crazy, but bear with me here. Why not just fuck it and go outside and train? And if they take you to prison, just fucking train your ass off there. Like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> like, what are they going to well, do to you? Well, is I that what they'll do? Would they really fine. take? Say that again, Rob. I did get a ten thousand dollar fine. For, you did? Yeah. Like ten thousand. That's like nine thousand American dollars. <laughs> yeah. Oh, seven thousand at least. <laughs> yeah. two, Holy two fuck! For what? For leaving your gym open? <clears throat> yeah. Just for having, um, yeah, training, <clears throat> training area outside. People could come and train and use our equipment outside if they lived within a five k radius. And then we got fucked over. <laughs> God, I, I would I would find it so hard not to find that whoever gave me that fine and fucked them Did up. Did somebody call the cops on you guys? Oh my God. No. Thinks I think oh, so. Yeah. I think so. Oh, but then God. the Department of Health and Human Services came. Yeah. Oh, Rob, you have God. kids, don't you? Yeah, I've got two, a nine month old and a three year old. Yeah. How the fuck is someone oh. finding a dude like that with kids? I just want to fucking mash that person. <laughs> so so you actually stay inside? Yeah, you had I think the the most Did you go in your backyard? We were, the most restricted we were was you could go um you know, five kilometers from your home to go to the supermarket or like exercise for like an hour, I don't know. It's just all silly rules like yeah, that. Yeah, and there was like a curfew. When I had my daughter, <clears throat> so yeah, she's nine months, I got pulled over on the way back from the hospital because of the curfew and i'm like i'm out because i just had a daughter she's just born so that's why i'm out yeah. they're like okay congratulations blah 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 yeah here's a here's a fine no i didn't get a fine that's no fine for that one <laughs> <laughs> 
I got one word for everyone. Guns. <laughs> Guns. That's pretty Guns. unlucky. We were so unlucky that if it was raining titties, we would have caught a massive dick. <laughs> no shit! It is that unlucky! Yeah. It is that unlucky! <laughs> hey! I live on the greatest continent in the world, Australia. <laughs> But we're so unlucky here that if it's raining titties, we would catch a dick. Wow, that's good. You're good. A massive dick. <laughs> a massive a massive dick. <laughs> titties! <laughs> wow. Fuck. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, Thank my you, Rob. You're a good dude for, for getting welcome. that in there. <laughs> um, why... Um, do, do you, do, do, Jay, you don't have any like, um, holes, right? Like there's no, like, okay, you can't swim or you can't run or, or, or you're going to be stuck staring at a bar. They're, like, uh, that's what I mean by a hole. Yeah. Not, not, not anything I would say a, that's a big standout. If and, there's something that won't show up, the glued hand raises, he fucking sucks uh, up, but yeah. that won't show up. <laughs> that's not even a. A movement yeah it's an accessory thing he sucks at. <laughs> what do you mean that that's the thing where you, you you're you're like this and you lean forward like this and you got to pull yourself back up like that yeah oh fuck what if adrian puts yeah. that in that could be some weird circus gymnastics trick hey do you guys um are you guys doing monkey pox in australia have they started that nonsense up with you guys monkey pox no no i don't know i don't watch the news or anything so i don't care. yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> they're starting up they're starting up a new one here in the states uh, how, how how was the travel into the country chill um yeah for the like the first week was to melbourne to la was pretty good um but the flight that we were supposed to have on saturday to come to madison got fully cancelled and then we're going to be sort of it was going to get changed to the fo the next day, and we're going to be late for check in. So we had to uh, rebook all that, and uh, we ended up in she, Mattis, uh, Chicago, and shot. then dr drove down. So change of plans, yeah, again, and ended up in Madison at like three a.m. Yeah, <laughs> again, um, did you, you drove from Chicago? It was right ahead, we would have bought a dick. It sounds like you did. <laughs> it sounds like you guys did catch a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we called it dick right. uh so you drove from <laughs> chicago to madison i think that's what caleb was gonna ask yeah yeah, yeah we got uh a ram 1500 so it was actually a nice drive and and, and toby oh uh, came it was the three of you guys he yeah. was in the tray for that it, of course of course um and did you have to stay the night in la um no we this was this was uh we stayed we stayed the week in LA after the big fourteen hour flight and then um from LA was when we got sort of stuffed okay. around. Okay, so okay, so you were planning to stay in LA already. It wasn't like you were there and stranded at the airport. Why why did you guys come a week early to LA? You know someone there? Uh no, it was just we thought it was gonna just gonna be easy. Like it was nice just to do the big flight and stay there instead of sort of doing the big flight and then going somewhere else um right and yeah it's it's easy there you know they got every, it's it, like everything we need's there um you train? I, what? I was pretty comfortable you know going there i know quite a bit just staying there so many years in a row and i knew that uh there was quite a few gyms and options for everything there um and the guys at next level crossfit in was it redondo, redondo beach yeah. they were awesome they really looked after us took us out stop golf um yeah they were really welcoming let us use the gym um for like a four hour period every day so it was really good it's awesome um it sounds like i just got a text that uh katrin is going to be joining the reykjavik team oh yeah i heard a couple of the boys talking about that today it sounds like lauren fisher's out didn't lauren have a shoulder injury before in her career does that sound familiar to you guys no Maybe uh, Rob no, would know. Yeah. She, she's more from Rob's era. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. But yeah, we heard that today that Catherine might be jumping in. We're like, how does that happen? <laughs> um, it, it says, uh, looks like they can list anyone as their alternates. They may have just named Katrin. That would be nuts. So it sounds like mm. uh, Lauren Fisher is out and Katrin is in. Let's just say that for now. And if it's not true, then fuck it. 
we'll, we'll, we'll unfix it. Hey, um, are you are you noble athlete, Jay? No, I'm with Reebok. Reebok. And, and what shoes are you going to be running in? Are you going to be wearing? Nanos. Nanos. Oh, yeah. awesome. Do you have a favorite pair of Nanos? Yeah, just the latest ones, the X2s, and uh, just black and gum. Keep it simple. <laughs> Um, yeah, those are, uh, those are awesome looking. Um, can you still get the nano too? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's the X too. So it's like, what is it? Like the 12? I, I think they, they were doing the old nano too. Um, if he raids my cupboard, he'll find some. <laughs> yeah. You do it. You, Rob, you got a bunch of those? Uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of every nano. Yeah. You keep them all. So I've probably got like. 80 pairs of shoes at home. And, and are we, what's your favorite? Um, it was. Hey, what's your know, wife say about 80 pairs? I got a fucking, I don't want to tell you how many I have. It's fucking weird too. But, uh, yeah. But, but my, I got, about, yeah, my, it's probably my, one of the only things that's like I fight with my wife about. Not fight, but she just will go in the closet and be like, are you fucking out of your mind? I'm like, shh. Yeah. Don't die. <laughs> yeah, I get that. She's like, get rid of all these shoes. Do you really need the, all these? I'm like, yeah, I don't even yeah. want them. I just Bring can't part memories. with them. I just can't part with them. It's like it's raining yeah. titties. Yeah, it's raining titties <laughs> in my closet. That's right. No dicks. And Reebok's <laughs> paying twelve k, I think, per event win. So be stupid not to wear them. Oh no, shit! They're doing that again this year. Yeah. yeah. Every athlete that's wearing Reebok shoes, if you win wearing the Reebok shoes, you get an extra twelve k. Yeah. How you're gonna wear Reeboks during that bike event? Yes. Hey, Everyone. the comparison Everyone. between the <laughs> the comparison between the Nano Two and the Nobles is like. Uh, like I mean, there is no titties. comparison. You you might as well just be running on a fucking bed of nails wearing the Noble. The Noble. It sounds like the Noble are the worst shoes ever fucking made, and it's weird because they're trying to give them to CrossFitters. It's fucking nuts. Have you have you worn a pair? Yeah, Mister J. I, I I've never worn a pair. No. The no, first, have... the first pair that we, uh, the first pair that I had seen was last year at the games, but I hadn't, I didn't wear any of them. Uh, Toby has Toby worn a pair of Noble? He would never. He wouldn't be caught dead in those. Um, no. Nah, Toby he's, puts a, he's a Toby just guy. smears his bare feet and dog shit and walks around like what? You got a problem? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you no, ever won the? A, you ever? Yeah, have you ever won that worn the Nobles, Rob? No, I've been with Reebok for ten years. So. Oh shit! No. Yeah. yeah, they're awesome. I, 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 the Nano Two is just by far the best shoe if you have wide feet. Yeah, the, I feel, I feel like the latest ones they've got pretty right again. I like them. Um, they don't get you didn't get there and they give you each three pair of noble shoes or something like that. The floral pattern, the white, the black. Here you go. Yeah, we got a lot. We got a whole bag full of shoes. And they're like behind six. you somewhere right now, but you just haven't put oh, them on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's look at those things. Do you have a pair of scissors? Let's cut a pair of those nobles in half right now. <laughs> you don't like them? Obviously. Just the, <laughs> got a sack full. Come here. Come here. Put those. I got these from Home Depot. They can cut through anything. What the? Oh my goodness! Look at that sole. I, that oh, that's one. That's one of those butt firming soles. Oh, that, oh that my goodness! Right. Oh my that goodness! Come here. Good. Bring those up here. Bring those up here. I just snipe those in half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, that bag is nice. Oh my goodness! Look at that sole. I'd be five eight with those. Five foot eight. How tall are you, Jay? Um. <laughs> Five nine, five ten. I don't know. One <laughs> one seventy five seven meters. Ridiculous. Oh, I, I like it says CrossFit on the bottom. Those are, are ridiculous souls. <laughs> you... <laughs> oh wow. Where these Sunday night. <laughs> Bowling shoes. Hey, let yeah. me see the toe. Let me see the toe. Yeah, my, my foot couldn't fit in there. I got man feet. Look at look at Rob. Look at look hey. at Rob. Can those fit in there? I'll slip them on for ya. <laughs> Almost knocked my coffee over. 
Hey, that would have been awesome if Toby was back there with a bat just fucking hitting home runs with those to the <laughs> 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 um, on text. No one. This is it. Oh, okay. This is it. Just you guys. And then tonight we're doing uh, last night we did the uh, roundup for the um uh, we, we predicted the men and their placements of how they're going to rank. These fucking guys had Dallin Pepper ahead of you. Now, I know he's fucking good, but you good. won your fucking region. Oh, no. no. No respect, eh? <laughs> I was so excited when I got you. And when I picked you, Brian Friend goes, fuck, because he knew I got the good dude. <laughs> yeah, but the rest Brian of these yesterday. dorks are just like, Brian they don't yesterday. get it. Yeah. What'd you say? I saw Brian yesterday. How is he? He's good. He's a legend. He is. Yeah, where where the, where are they? Twenty fourth. Jesus, that's worse than last year. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, you're down there with just a bunch of. Uh, you're down there with old Americans and European dudes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good company. Were they Brian pick? Brian's picks. Those were Brian's. Yeah. I'm gonna have to have a word with him. Let him know. Let him know. <laughs> Let him know it's going to be raining dicks on him. <laughs> hey, <laughs> those shoes aren't. Yeah, those shoes aren't. Gone. Those shoes aren't three hundred fifty dollars, are they? Are they? Um, Pretty sure they I are. I don't know. I have heard that um, Noble stuff is a bit expensive. Uh, Ricky was we Ricky was wearing one of those uh, Tyr shirts, tire shirts. Uh, yeah. And those are those are nice. That shirt you're wearing is nice. That's a noble shirt, huh? Yeah. Yeah, no, you, look buff, you look buff as shit in that. Uh, thank you, mate. <laughs> Be better than Toby's shirt. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyone pull out yet? Anything you can give us? Anything you heard? You see anyone come in with crushes? Crutches? You see like Yonikoski on crutches or anything? Or No. No, no Olsen with a bag of ice on his shoulder? Or... <laughs> no, everyone looks pretty good so far. Yeah. Everyone was excited to get on a bike and... uh I don't know. I suppose we'll see after the first day. Did you see Colton on a bike? No, he wasn't in our group. That's take the seat off. <laughs> uh, that, I'm, I'm wondering. I know. I'm wondering. I'm wondering. Well, I think it's it's a joke, but it's not a joke. <laughs> I think uh, now there's. I don't know if it went any smaller than the size small frame, but I think he'd be fine on a small. I was on a medium. Uh, I, I think in general. Um, smalls are for people who are five five dudes who are five five because I'm five five and like smalls like yeah. usually like but but a lot of bikes sometimes I'll even ride a large bike and it, I feel like I'm cramped up in there so I guess yeah who who's who's the manufacturer of the bike uh Trek okay and they're local to Madison right oh are they I think I'm not so sure. yeah I think they are yeah, yeah that's cool yeah we've both got Trek yeah. bikes at home. Dual suspension ones. Um, when this no is one. over, uh, what do you guys do? Do you go straight home or do you hang out in the states? Yeah, we're uh, we go back to LA on Monday for the night and then fly home Tuesday. No, we're gonna drive up see Savan and then. Oh fly yeah, home. go to Savan's house, hang yeah. out. For that you guys are so welcome to do that. <laughs> you are so welcome to do that. I live I live all the way in California. It'd be about a two day drive nonstop. Oh, I'm really? right on the Pacific Ocean. You guys would have a blast. You could bring Toby. Uh, I'll, I'll let him know I, when he clocks off. I have I have a doghouse for Toby. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, um, Homer Simpson, gave me 10 of something. I don't know what money that is, but it's something. <laughs> yeah. And he says, Sevon, viscosity doesn't matter at 50. So... Um, the other day, someone was asking me if my tubes were tied, like my like if I like got snipped. Oh, yeah. And when you get snipped, I, w what I believe happens is the hundreds of millions of sperm that are injected into the liquid that transports them into the vagina, it stops those dudes from getting in the liquid, right? Oh, that yeah. liquid's called semen. So when the liquid comes out of your penis, that's the semen. It's like the all. It's like the swimming pool and the dudes and the swimmers in one and it leaves your penis and goes into the vagina. I mean, I know you guys know this. I told these guys that I would never get snipped because I think it would change the, 
the the thickness of that load it would change it like the the, the makeup of it you know what i mean it would be like eggs that are too runny or something or like uh or like um if you're making chocolate chip cookies and like you just had to put too much water in there or something yeah. and this fucking right. guy's telling me it doesn't matter at 50 i don't have enough swimmers to change the the but i uh, to change like the the, the low but I, I i but i that's why i'm not getting snipped cuz i don't want to change the uh... I just wait to. Uh, eventually, they got to go through menopause. Why should I get snipped? Eventually, they're gonna run out of eggs and it's fucking game on. Party away. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fair enough. See? Yeah. See. So 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 Heidi, so you do admit it changes the viscosity. I wonder if it I changes the taste. Admission. All right, all right, all right. Let's clean this. You should ask the California hormones doc. If it changes it. Uh, and when you go back to Australia, will you have to quarantine? No, no, it's all back to normal, which is good. No stress. It is back to normal. Yeah. yeah. The Asian people are still wearing masks in Australia, though, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, there's there's people that are still wearing masks everywhere, just being. I guess conservative and trying to be safe, whatever. There are Wasting paper. Masks here Those masks end up in our oceans, being thoughtless towards the fish in the oceans. Yeah. Well, that's all. I, I thought exactly that during the whole COVID thing. How much waste you're going through for everything, um, being over the top. And then a few months later, or 12 months later, they go and say, you don't have to wipe equipment down because it's an airborne disease. It's not, you can't get it by touching things so just yeah there's a there's a lot of that going on ah uh, you can't get it by touch oh jeez this fucking world okay anyway you guys are always welcome to move to the united states i want to let you know you have an open invitation yeah um, sure. i know like i know that. you you, you live you live in a great you live in a great country you just got some weirdos over there we got some weirdos over here but we have a couple states that you guys could hide in texas florida <laughs> Um, I appreciate you guys coming on. I'll be bugging you guys throughout the week. Is that phone number? So you have an iPhone now in the States, Jay? Yeah, I have a SIM card. Yeah. Okay. So when I text that that thread that me, you, and Matt Sues are on, is it okay to text that or am I fucking up your minutes? Yeah. No, for sure. Okay. And what happens? Toby carries your phone and like and like he he checks every text and then relays them to you? Yeah, something like that. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on. I you're know welcome. you're going to kick Thanks ass. Yeah, Jay, you're my guy. Um, I appreciate it. Bring it home for us, buddy. Will do. <laughs> so be later, brother. Mr. Rob Forte, the legend. Thanks for coming on, dude. See you guys. Yep, you are awesome. Bye. Bye. Americans are fucked. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> If you say so. Asians wear masks everywhere. Racist. Oh, man. What's going on in New Zealand is nuts. It's nuts. I was reading this morning. So there's this report coming out in New Zealand. That people are dying from who got the vaccine. And then so then I put it to a fact check. And the fact check says, no, it's false. Facebook fact checked it and it's false. But then the, the Facebook fact check says only three people have died from the vaccine. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> it says the article's fake. And then the fact check says only three people have died. I'm like, oh, that's that's enough for me. Not really. Fake, 170, 171 reported deaths in New Zealand from the vaccine. Only Facebook says only three of them are real. Well, great. Jesus Christ. Well, great. There are okay. people still wearing masks out here too. Yeah, there's people. Oh, at the games, there's people wearing masks. I heard. I heard uh, Fakowski and his wife are walking around with masks. I bet Adler's wearing one too. They're not even Asian. Only Asian culturally, only Asians have to keep wearing masks. That's their. That's yeah. that's cultural appropriation when white people wear masks. You know, know that. That's offensive. It's really yeah, it's offensive. offensive. It's only Asians do that. Cancel those motherfuckers. Hey, I, I really want this company to sponsor me. Speaking of semen. TYR. I'm going to go oh. to uh I'm going to go to their about. 
Wow. Wow. Are you on their website? No, I just went to their Instagram. Go to their about page. Oh my goodness. I'm made for these guys. Or they're made for me. Founded in Huntington Beach, California by swimwear designer Joseph DiLorenzo, current owner, 1972 Olympic bronze medalist Stephen Furness. See, we're born the same year. Oh, no. I was born the year he won the bronze. Dude, that dude must be old as dirt. Tier Sports was established in 1985 to provide the competitive swim market with a vibrant, performance-driven prints. Dude, their their American uh, bathing suits are dope. I'm going to get my kid a wetsuit, a tier wetsuit. Yeah, yeah they're dope. We used to, uh, they used to sponsor our uh, the company that I used to teach them lessons for. Are you, are you, um, look at, I'm going to, I'm going to, here, I want to show you something. Share screen. Um, right here. So those swimsuits and what's that? Is that a wetsuit? Yeah, I think that's a wetsuit. It's a full body suit. Yeah. Apparel, swimwear, triathlon. To be a dry suit. Oh, is, is it, is it, what's this? Something called a swim skin. What's a swim skin. Oh, wow. Oh, like a full body swimsuit. Swim equipment, apparel, features, sunglasses, swimwear. Techn- oh, technical suits. Have you seen these wetsuits or these swimsuits that you can only wear a couple times and then you throw them away? No, what are those? Are they like recycled know. or something? Or is it just no, like- they're just like super high end? You know, it's like they're for they're swim meets so only. You do two, they're $800 yeah. for a pair or something, and you throw them away. <clears throat> I suppose afterwards it's so stretched out, you, it's not going to have the same properties. I Oh, yeah. Interesting. I have a pair of their swim goggles, affordable, effective, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Kenneth, I almost uh, put you on timeout on accident. Like I clicked the button and it said, do you want to put this guy in timeout? <laughs> uh, Sorry, is Tier gunning for title sponsor in a few years? Is that likely? I Fuck if I know. Anything's I, possible, Julian. Come on. I, I have a feeling their shoes aren't doing so good over at uh, over at um, Noble. I think they're having a, a bad shoe sale day. Well, well shit, we it's only the same shoes for five years straight. I think people get tired of it. And and they're just they're, remember that remember that phase that women went through like a couple years ago where they had their pants pulled up really high. Yeah. Like, like they have like high waisted leggings and high-waisted pants and shit like that now yeah it was just it was just fucking weird and, and that's what how i feel about noble shoes like their soul looks like like dude like no it's like hey it's like the like they're trying to be cool by how ugly to make their stuff it's like no they're trying to be like gym shark almost is that that's what Noah wears right that's like the all the buff dudes wear it yeah just like a bunch of bodybuilders and i don't know juiced up fuckers yeah, that's what I think of when I think of Jim Sharks. No judgment. Okay, uh, tonight uh, at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, are you going to be – what time is that for you, Caleb? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> hey, your voice has changed. Like now that you're, now that you're working full-time. Hello, caller. How are you? Hello? Hello. How are you doing? Good. I'm concerned about Caleb. He's he's not concerned. He's just different. He's changed a little bit since he's flown overseas. How are you? Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you doing, Savan? I'm amazing. I've been touched by God. <laughs> That's amazing. I've been listening to your podcast for a long time, and finally, I decided to call. Thank you. Where are you calling from? Uh we. Uh, I'm from Mexico, but I'm living in Houston. Are you a UFC fan? Uh, I'm a huge fan from your podcast. Oh, cool. Oh, awesome. 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 I love it because UFC's got uh, Derek Lewis down there, and I know they had a fight in Dallas uh, this past weekend. And, uh, yeah. And I and I know the, the, uh, the, the first UFC Mexican champ uh, fought on that card, Moreno, and they were saying it was like Mexico down there. Yeah. I saw the the fight on on internet. I was not able to to go. I don't go often to to much here. I recently moved, so 
I'm I'm looking for the American dream still. You're looking for what? The American what? Oh, dream. That's the American dream. American so dream. I work my ass off. Like every oh, fucking uh, immigrant we... does. Work, yeah, that's true. But... Work your ass but, but, off. What... Yeah. So, but I, I saw Brandon Moreno winning. He's an amazing fighter. With a fucking huge heart, right? I mean, the heart on that guy is amazing. Yeah, you saw the the bruise in the eye, like the the cut and everything. He he's fucking strong. Yeah, and how about at the end of the fight when they brought in the um uh the Brazilian guy and, and they wanted to like start a beef and he says, "Hey, my daughter's watching. I'm not I'm not acting like an asshole. Sorry." I'm like, wow, no. wow. Well, it's pretty combo because he's a true at the end. Yep, yep. Yep, I got to get that guy on the show. And 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 uh, and uh, you know his coach James Krause has been on the show at least once, and uh, he's he's a, a stand up guy too, amazing guy. He's a, he's pretty loose and he's more open to podcasts. He participates a lot in a podcast in Mexico from uh, uh, Roberto Martinez. He's a Mexican podcaster, but he goes a lot. He has really good communication and everything, so it will be easy to get him, I guess. Yeah, are you a CrossFitter? Yes, so I've been doing cross trade for nine years, so nine years already. No shit. Were you doing it in Mexico? Yes, of course. Um, you know, Mexico was. I, I don't know if it's still a problem, but Mexico was one of the only countries where we couldn't get the trademark when I worked at CrossFit. Someone had bought it, and they were refusing to let go of it, but they said they would sell it to us for two million dollars. And I think that Greg was like, "Hey, fuck you." But because of that, well, there were always very few gyms, CrossFit gyms, in um. Mexico because they could just call themselves CrossFit without, you know, uh, having to sign up because we didn't own the trademark there. Practically what happened every time in Mexico, a lot of, uh, bureaucracy it's about money and people love to make some shit. Uh, I understand that, that the place I started doing CrossFit, uh, was not affiliated and we had CrossFit as a name and then we changed it because of that thing. And, even we have, at least I have my L1. And when I requested to do it, I even got a special prize for doing it in Mexico because they are trying to uh, support the, the Mexican people to get affiliated. I got a 50% discount in my L1. No shit. I think it's the only country that we have that because when I contact profit because uh, I wanted to get the, the seminar, they offered me 50% off. What so year was that? Me, what year was really that? Good. Last year. I oh. did I think like January, wow. but they told me and a friend of mine, he just contacted them and he got a twenty percent discount. Well what did you think of the L one? I love it. I really like it. Uh I was afraid to do it because I had the money and everything and I was scheduling and cancel it, but like a week before the day I started to to read the the guide and everything, and at least the people that I got it with Steffi and Dabo are the Mexican people that they do the seminars. I yeah. really like it. Like yeah. they are super, super fun, and they make it really good, easy going. Uh, some people from US went there also, so it was really good for me. I learned a lot, and at least now I know how to apply some things that I already know for years doing CrossFit, and I now I have the basic knowledge and how to. Uh, tell the other people. Awesome. Uh, here's a little video from, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, here's a little video from March 2nd, 2017. This is in my living room. Of that triplet. But, Avi, who is that? For the second two. Look at Avi is only, fuck, two years old, three years old, and he knows that's Dave Castro. Right there. The open. R God, cross How long have you been doing since uh, 06 or maybe 05 I started working there in 06 and I've been doing it I think since 05 man CrossFit I am a C I you dear CrossFit you have created a serious serious problem with me holy shit at, at least for me CrossFit was something good because I never was into any sport I was well where I am still one of those guys that I have issues with people telling me what to do. So they keep me out from judo, swimming, a lot of sports. So I never did anything. And I was pretty, pretty fat, like 245 to 50 pounds. 
A when fat guy that doesn't started, like being I, told what to do. Go on, yes. <laughs> so uh, he started doing CrossFit when I was 27. So he, cha- he helped me a lot with my self-esteem and development with uh, socializing with people. So right now, every time I travel or something, the first thing I do is look for a CrossFit box and I make a lot of friends. Uh, I have the, the good thing that my sister lives in Europe, so sometimes I go there to visit my nephews and my nieces. So from there, I start traveling and I have met a lot of people around. Well, thank you. I'm glad. So now you're able to, when you buy a six pack of Coke, you're able to share one or two of them because of CrossFit. I I, I met a girlfriend because of CrossFit. Oh, good. So, all right, brother. Thank you for calling. Thank you for being a listener. Thank you for all your support. Say, yeah. Okay, bye. Can't fucking call the show and start telling me about how your sister lives in fucking Europe and you do CrossFit over there. Unless there's nudity in that story. What the fuck kind of story is that? Unless they're, unless no, they're I mean, friends. thank you for calling. Hey, what does this mean, this guy David Wide says? The Katrin story is a blue hat? What does that cap. mean? Is he it cap? Bullshit. Oh, it is? That's what, they're saying. That's what he's saying. The Katrin oh. story is bullshit. So he says America sucks and the Katrin story is a lie. Tanner, how can I help you? Hey, Simon. Wow, what an honor it is to be a guest on the show. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Quick question. Yes. Um, I've been coaching at a CrossFit affiliate for about uh, about a year and uh, recently got offered a general manager position, so a full-time position. Um, really appreciate what you're doing for the CrossFit community of bringing them back uh, to the roots of what CrossFit is and what um, CrossFit has um, where it started. And what, what would your advice to be uh, in a GM to a gym to run a CrossFit gym, um, kind of how CrossFit started with the roots. Um, I, how would you suggest to run a CrossFit gym? Honestly, I bet you, I bet you, I can't tell you anything you don't fucking know already. Let me just ask you this one question: Did you sleep your way to the top, or did you earn it through uh, other means? Did you fuck someone to get the job, or did you earn it through uh, through being there a long time and, and and adding value to the business? No, I just added value hard worker and uh, was willing to be in genius in areas of, uh, I, I work full time in addition to coaching. So, so it's um, a little different willing, than how, yeah, yeah. So you run your gym runs a little bit different than HQ at HQ. There's several people who fucked their way to the top uh, currently. So, um, so that's good. I, th- I think it's better to earn your way through uh, accolades and business acumen and uh, what you, how you add value to the clients than uh, banging your uh, seat superiors. Uh, so, um, man, and let me ask you the question. How do you think, why do you think they promoted you to that? Um, I don't know. I think I was, I've been faithful. I've been a really hard worker. I think I see value in, in our clients and our members. Um, I took over the foundation or like foundations program and they really enjoyed, they really liked how I ran the foundations program. Um, and they kind of want more of what I had to offer uh, to the table. And so they brought me on and offered me a full-time position. Um, and, and are you, were you always available to the owners? Like, are you, are you like, uh, they call you up. Can you work today? Yes. Can you work tomorrow? Yes. Can you change the schedule tomorrow? Yes. What do you think about uh, op- being open on Christmas? Yes. Are you that guy? Uh, yes. I've been that guy for them for about a year, a year, a year, year and a half now. Yeah. Yeah, you're a good dude. The two things I hear when you say faithful and you and you believe and you believe in in your in the clients, I just uh, yeah. Do you have a child? Do you have a child? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm in the car right now. Oh, I don't mind. It was either a child or a lamb. Um, yeah, I think the two. I think the greatest things as human beings that we can offer to other people is believing in other people and being available and being available. And it sounds like it sounds like you offered the owners both of that. And if you offer your clients that. And people just want to be around people who believe in them. Mm. Wow. That's awesome. That's so good. Well, What's the name of your affiliate? It's called uh, the Tribe. CrossFit Tribe. That's where it goes by 3F CrossFit as well. Uh, do, do they have plans on staying at CrossFit Gym? 
Um, I'm trying to get into PT school, so this is kind of uh, temporary while I finish my undergrad. So, but if the opportunity presented itself, I would love to apply for the seminar staff to stay in CrossFit. But do the owners plan on staying an affiliate? Yes, they do. They do. Cool. All right, brother. Well, thanks for calling. Congratulations yeah, on awesome. the kid. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, yeah. JB. Bye. Thanks. What do you say? Thanks, JB. K K B C B. I don't know. C B maybe. C B. That's you, Caleb you know. Beaver. I guess. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, tonight at uh, six p.m. we will have the. Is it six or six thirty? I think it's like fifty-five something. Oh no, that's tomorrow morning at six fifty-five. So. Oh, okay. T uh, tonight at 6 p.m. we have the uh, we're going to tell you who the w winners are of the 2022 CrossFit Games. The women, uh, Brian and John Young, will have the winners for you, so you don't even have to watch the games if you don't want to. And then tomorrow morning at 6:55 a.m. I will be having Jr. Howell and the Thumb Taylor self on to talk about the events that have been released and get Jr. and uh, Taylor's opinions on them. And then it doesn't look like we have anything else scheduled for tomorrow, or Wednesday, or Thursday, or Friday, or Saturday. I guess I just take like four days off. Yeah, sure. Get a vacation in, Savon. You deserve yeah. it. <laughs> All right, guys. Caleb Beaver, thank you. Everyone, Julian Garcia, thank you.